you. We shall now go on to our next speaker, Dr. Thomas George, who is a senior consultant at uh, Chaitanya Eye Hospital and a very leading uh, cataract and glaucoma surgeon from Chaitanya Eye Hospital, Trivandrum. So he's going to show us another very interesting video. On to you, Dr. George. Thank you, Dr. Chitra. I'm going to share something that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Your mentors may leave you prepared, but they can't leave you ready. I learned the real visceral difference between preparation and readiness. Good morning. You can be prepared as much as you want, but you're never ready for some situations. This case started as a routine dream cataract of any cataract surgeon, but soon things took a turn for the worse. The anterior chamber shallowed almost immediately after we started fake emulsification. Soon the chamber was shallowing, the pupil was no longer round, viscore, heel on, viscoat, nothing could keep the chamber formed. And putting in viscoat this time made things worse. I thought visco had gone behind the pupil, but taking it out only made things worse. So I had to send in iris hooks to keep the pupil dilated enough for me to see what's going on. And I somehow managed to take a few chunks of nucleus out with great difficulty. As you can see, the capsular bag is lax and rotation is difficult. Once I saw the red glow, I could see that the posterior capsule was convex and not concave and this was not a silicon oil eye. So, I put in a viscoat under the nucleus hoping to send the PC away from the nucleus and a PC rent developed. So, I lift the nucleus pieces out in the AC with the intention of bailing out Extend the wound and nucleus pieces are taken out with a vectus. By that time, vitreous had presented itself into the wound. What I did not notice on the table but noticed on reviewing the video was that the vitreous was pulsating in the wound. Transmitted pulsations were there in the vitreous that's prolapsing out of the wound. Anyway, I had an intact rexis, so the cataract surgeon in me told me I can do a good vitrectomy and put a lens in the sulcus on top of the rexis. So that's how I proceeded. Soon, something white started peeping up from the nasal side. I had not dropped any cortex. So it took me some time to realize that is the aura serrata and the choroid behind. So quickly deciding to close the wound, I asked for sutures. And the sister calmly asked me, why do you want sutures for a fake emulsification? Well, I lost my cool and luckily she did not. Eventually, the sutures did come in. I took out the iris hooks and managed to close the wound with a central box suture. And that alone was secure for the wound. But I went on to put a continuous suture to close the entire wound also. We waited after that for one month and the hemorrhage mostly resolved. We did a pass planar vitrectomy and placed an intraocular lens in the sulcus. A nasal crescentric TRD was there which was left alone and that after one month became a giant retinal tear with an RD. A repeat procedure was done and the final vision was 612 and 6 months okay so far. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, Dr. George. That was a very challenging video which we had shown. But on hindsight, uh, what could have been different, done differently as to what you did? What was the reason for this? Was there an expulsive coronal effusion in the big... So, yes. Luckily for me, it was not an expulsive in the form that nothing expelled too much. But it was a supracoronal hemorrhage. And this patient is well into her 80s. 
and I am primarily a glaucoma surgeon. So this was planned as a cataract with trap. So oh. to start with itself, I had a pressure that's in the 20s, patient in the 80s, enough risk factors. Yeah. And yes. because of the cataract, I took some time to realize what is going on behind. Yes. Uh, so, and I have actually highlighted where all I should have thought. Yes. Essentially, <laughs> she was also a hypertensive. I think you might have been a bit of a challenge whether to start mannitol. Maybe when the eye was getting uh, to be as uh, tense as this was, you could have given a mannitol to this patient and brought down the pressure because this is probably not the case where you can do a pass plana vitrectomy to lower the IOP because that would be uh, hugely hazardous. You could get a decompression retinopathy kind of a situation. Uh, I want the thoughts of Dr. Kapil, Dr. Ram Murthy. Oh, I think I should compliment Dr. Thomas for showing this case, you know, yes. obviously a very difficult case and he had the guts to show it and uh, yes. also highlight the complications. Yes. I'm not uh, the initial because it started out as a walk in the park case, as he mentioned, uh, routine case, and then it like, ended in difficulties. When such an uptrust is there in a routine case, I would not hesitate to go ahead and do a, a limited anti-devitectomy, go through a pasquinar route and decom uh, compress the vitreous and then things are likely to settle down and maybe go ahead and uh, do the rest of the surgery because this was not a, a complicated case to start with. And second point is that when you have uh, when you had opened up the incision and uh, when you before doing the vitrectomy, I would have definitely close the incision, especially you could see whether you notice the pulsations or not. The lips were not really getting opposed. In that case, with an open wound to go ahead, it's uh, inviting trouble, a supracoroidal hemorrhage or uh, even supracoroidal effusion, which you ended up with. And I think this case also highlights the point that, you know, uh, going in with a wire vitreous and trying to remove nucleus, all of us do it sometime or other. Let's admit it. Obviously, it causes a lot of traction on the uh, uh, retinal periphery. And that's the reason uh, you ended up with a giant retinal tear subsequently, and it ended up with a problem, especially in an institution like yours, where readily vitreoretinal support is available. Maybe taking, uh, allowing them to take care of these cases uh, when you land in a situation like this might be a good idea. I would just say that maybe initial anterior vitrectomy to decompress the um, uh, problems you had subsequently. And when you had to do vitrectomy, going ahead and closing the main incision and maybe once they were not using the wire vectors might have been good idea, uh, good thoughts to, you could have uh, adhered to. Uh, but especially when you notice the TRD, uh, maybe at that time itself, it could have been dealt with instead of uh, waiting for the patient to go ahead and have further complications. So you did mention that was only nasally and uh, maybe that was not initially impinging on the vision of the patient. I think I do agree with what Ramuthi said, but I would feel that a mantle is all should have been given and you do not go in and do a pass plane of vitrectomy. Uh, eye with a high pressure and sudden lowering of pressure can be hazardous to the posterior segment. But what could have been done is uh, when you uh, you do need to do an ultrasound to see how, how the uh, supracoronal hemorrhage is evolving, stop the blood thinners and uh, check the lower the BP, do all of these things. And probably, as he had said, a traction could have been dealt with at the same at the second sitting when you did the surgery, and probably a tamponade could also have been uh, created so that a laser could have been done so that you don't need a, a third uh, second sitting of the surgery. Anything, uh, Mohan, you want to add? You know, actually, when you see an uptrust like what, uh, see, it was a walk in the park case, as Ramut rightly said. It was a straightforward case, but there are risk factors. Age, arterial sclerosis, hypertension, and glaucoma patient, all these are risk factors for expulsive. Okay. But when you see, when as soon as you enter, it is okay. But after some time, the, the AC becomes shallow and all that. What I would do is I will do a, I will just not blindly put a vitrectomy probe there. Yes. I, I, I will not put a trocar and cannula. The simple reason is that I want to do an indirect. Absolutely right. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, can I come back on this? Yeah, yes. I will do an. Uh, are you able to hear me? <coughs> yes, yes. I will do an indirect ophthalmoscopy on the table, and then probably decide uh, on whether to put a thing. If we don't don't see anything uh, in the choroid, uh, like an expulsive effusion or something like that, then probably uh, would decompressing the vitreous 
I have not put. I just put a trocar and cannula, but I have not put the vitrectomy probe inside. I'll just at the uh, at the um, uh, what do you call at this entry site. I will just do what is called a, a vitrectomy there and decompress the vitreous. Of course, preoperative mannitol, intraoperative mannitol also everything helps in this case. But just blindly putting a trocar and cannula is not uh, advisable. Yes. Oh, I would uh, tend to agree with you, Mohan. But uh, the thing is, you know. They had gone to the extent when the nucleus had already got hydrated. Even if you're trying to do a indirect on the table, maybe there would not have been enough view unless there was a full face supraparietal which was there. Anyway, I mean the uh, different pros and cons to each step. Yeah, uh, Doctor Roy, yeah. anything to add, or shall we go on? Yes, yes, Doctor George, tell me you have to add. Yes. The thing is, uh, looking back, yes. I think that pulsating vitreous itself. Yes. Was because the bleed had already started. Yes, yes. That is uh, there, and I had called in the VR surgeon. He had he was operating in the next theater, and he took about four minutes to come to me. By then, everything I had finished. Yes, I had made all my decisions and closed up. Absolutely, and I was there for the VR surgery uh, because I was putting in the lens. That TRD was actually a like a falciform fold. It was refusing to go back and. Uh, our VR surgeon, Dr. Manoj, who I think all of you know, uh, decided that it's more risky to go after that now. We would end up putting PFCL and all, yeah. and we decided to wait on it, which was not a, bad, a good decision finally, one month later. Yeah. It depends. Yeah, I think there were a lot. It's a very complex situation, and on hindsight, we could talk a whole lot of things. But I think. But uh, amazing video, Chitra. Amazing. Okay. Thomas. Yes, wonderful video. Fantastic. Yes, yes Dr. George. Thank you. Thank you. you. Have, you just opened up a lot of things for us. I think the well, the best thing to do is give Manitol if you can proceed with the case and or close the eye and wait for a better day. That's the 